Okay, so like I said earlier, the <clears throat> 4020 got the new oil pan under it. Um, it's all ready to go. Like I said earlier, this was the line that was leaking. We put fresh paint on it. It was leaking, dripping down here. And then as you would drive forward, the wind would blow everything all out the back, making it look like the hydraulics were leaking on it. Got the brand new oil pan up underneath it. Got it all spray painted and good to go that way there's the old oil pan it is cracked uh right there where did i see it right the heck there it is all cracked no good so that is that 3010 I'm getting the valves adjusted on it one was out of adjustment the other couple were loose or so and the chattering you heard in the front end on this thing in my videos was the drive coupler right there for the pto pump or not the pto pump the hydraulic pump the bolts come loose on it so that is what all that chattering was hopefully it'll quiet it up now and we can get this 3010 back in operation i'm hoping to use this tractor a little bit more since we got the charging problem figured out on it with brand new battery cables on it heavier battery cables and we have got this tractor a-okay same as that 4020 so we'll catch you guys in the next video thanks for watching well it's another day and we're going to be working on the big 7810 today. Um, the injection pump, injector pump, is leaking on this tractor. And AgPro is supposed to be coming out to work on it. I know money well spent. Um... So we got the plug put in and we let it run for four hours at a high at a fast idle and we determined that it is leaking back behind the injection pump where it's making a mess and all that and it's gonna get corrected Got the combine all done last night. Um, so that thing is ready to be put to bed. Until summertime when we start combining wheat. Damn trees, pain in the butt. Just back here, in the back. Dump all this off, or I should say, kind of push it all off. Stuff doesn't burn, so we can't uh, burn it in the fireplace. But it is what it is. And it's snowing or doing something. Yuck. Well, my ditch that I dug worked good because um, it took all that water away. We have severe flooding up here. And last night when I went through the bottom barn just to kind of check on things, we were all flooded. I see we got some action there and the ducks are just loving it that drain oh there's a drain there the ducks are loving it the ducks 
are happy. <laughs> that drain can't handle it. And it's raining again or snowing or doing something. Okay. And I might put new tubes and O-rings on that oil filter. Okay. You know, because it uh, it looked like it was leaking. I don't know if it, right. it just was like wet. Hmm. But uh, yeah, that's a real, to get that bolt out of that shutoff solenoid, so I might just let it hang there. Right. wasn't too bad got two buckets of ashes I don't think I'm gonna spread them out in that field because they'll just blow right up against the house again later all right so what Jason and I are gonna do now is well I'm gonna move this red truck out of the way this one is getting battery tender put on it and so is the white one but we're gonna start with this one because I'm unsure of where the jump ports are on this truck. Okay, so it, well, you hook your hot there and you go somewhere on the ground, like a step or something. That kind of makes, makes sense. So that way you're gonna take the step off. I'm gonna get this truck started and um, let it build air because it's, it is an automatic and it does not like to move under 120 pound. With an automatic, you have to let it build air all the way. You cannot get impatient like with this truck or the white one, for example. Um, you have to let it build air. Actually, I think it's actually 160 on an automatic. I'm not, I can't remember now, but you have to let it sit and build air for a while. this truck set here and build air um, and we'll probably come back in 
20 minutes or a half hour and we will attempt to move it. Well, must be doing something right. Must be doing something right. Figured now would be a better opportunity to do it while I'm already over here cleaning the fireplace out. So I figured I'd move the dump truck so that way we can just pull the combine right on through. Kind of a rainy, oh, snotty day, but as long as we go slow with the combine we should be able to keep all of the schnutz and the goo off of it I'm hoping and the ducks are still having fun it's all that matters is if the ducks are having fun or not the heck with the farmers Well, when this job is all said and done, it'll be about, what do you think? $3,000? Could be. Could be. Yeah, I don't think the parts were all that much. No, no, it could be a $3,000 job or a $4,000 job. It all depends on what you're looking at doing yeah oh, hopefully hopefully it's closer to two yeah that's that's wishful thinking <laughs> <laughs> oh well we'll let him put miss piggy back together and i think jason and i are gonna go move to combine while i'm waiting on jason to get done talking to scott randall well howdy doody that fits in there Perfect. Why did I have to lamb it like that? Oh well, it fits.
it is out the door. You want? You want me to go ahead of you so I can open the door back up? That's fine. Okay. Need what? Rat poison? Where's it at? You got them sticky things like we threw in the loader, right? Where were where are those sticky things at? Oh, the cubes? Oh. Okay. I'm gonna take and put some fuel in the machine first, so that way nothing condensates in the fuel tank. And we will have a full tank of fuel to start 2024 wheat harvest. I'm going to get back here and get ready. Right there ought to be good enough. back up a little more. Well, Jason's going to fuel that up and I'm going to go home and open a building back up because I was unsure of the time frame that he was going to be bringing that combine over so I will just motor my way on the home and go open the building back up I could have left it open to begin with but why leave it open to get the rain and everything else all inside of a nice clean building but the first thing is I'm going to start that dump truck back up so that it can start building air pressure again and take Jason back to the farm. Why in the world am I making things that much harder than they already are? I have no clue. There. Okay. I guess we can take our tray out. And, oh, what do we got here? I don't know. They put the batteries in a goofy spot on these trucks. I'll tell you that much. But, it is what it is. That might be, I don't know. Let's just, that looks like hot. But then, where's the ground? Huh. I don't know. And? Nothing. Mmm. Apparently you can't go there. Darn it. Oh well. At least I tried. Now them combines, you can sure hear them before you can see them. That is because Case IH did not put mufflers on their 2388. Series so combines, I'm not sure about the 2588s or anything greater or lesser. I just know that ours does not have a muffler on it. 
Surprisingly, I can hear that over the idling dump truck. But that just means that he's in the area. So I'm gonna have to have Jason help me with putting a little tender on the dump truck because I do not know what we have going on here with the battery. This is all new to me. I've never, never done this truck before. So I just assume that this is the hot because it comes out right there, the red. Snakes on back up and through here, right there. But maybe there's another trick to this that I don't know. So Jason's coming with the combine. I got my treats right here for the mice. Well, we're gonna give them some treats over the winter time. And hopefully that'll get them to grow big and strong. All you gotta do is give them a little treat like this every once in a while and it'll help with mouse efficiency. So we're gonna let them pull the combine in and then we're going back to dump truck right in front of the combine because well we'll be needing the dump truck way before the combine. So that is what is going to happen. Don't worry, the machine fits in this side as well as that side back there. So he's got to fold the ladder in because um, it does not fit in here with the ladder extended out. But that's all right. It is what it is. So I might as well just set myself in a corner and just wait till he gets a machine passed. And then I will hand him the mouse treats.
the trunk all in here where it's supposed to go. Got the combine in here. What I did wrong on the battery was, you're supposed to go to the ground on the battery, not here, but to the battery. <laughs> Simple mistake, but we made it right. Okay, so now we're into big building. Um, I had the little Heston plugged in. Oh, the beginning of the week, what was it Sunday being the first day of the week? So that way we could um, put the pig mover on it because we was gonna be getting rid of some pigs. That that never happened. So now we get to turn our attention over to taking these battery covers off on this loader. There is there are two batteries on this machine and they are underneath the step on both sides so this is not a step i don't know why deer didn't make this accessible uh from both sides it would have made sense but they felt that it would be better to only have a step on the one side okay it is what it is so we're gonna take our bolts out of here and i think it might actually be bigger than a than a five eighths hmm. what the heck i thought that five eighths was what we used last time hmm Well, is it 11 sixteenths? Aha! It is 11 sixteenths. It is 11 sixteenths, so... We'll be taking this bolt. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make life easy and go get... And go get a socket. Now that I know that... 11 sixteenths is the correct socket or size i mean so the boys are in here working on this 7810 and it's a running we're gonna back the thing outside and do a leak evaluation on the old girl that is you back the thing outside Set it away from a standing structure and you let her run for, say, an hour or so to check her leaks. That's the way that it's supposed to be done is a proper leak evaluation. So we're gonna let it sit here and run for a little bit and We'll check back with you guys in a little bit. So I found the little trickle charger. It was on the floor, right in the middle of the floor where it's not supposed to be. I'm growing more and more to liking this DeWalt impact gun. The more and more I use it, um, I don't know what you guys think, but you know, it uh, is not up to what I think or what you guys think. Although you guys can give me insight and that is not going to work like that. So it is a good thing I brought an extension over. And it's even the right drive. It might be a little too tall, but um, you know, it is what it is. Actually, no, that is not too tall. What are we got going here? 
Hmm. Why is that doing that? Don't be rounding that off. Why are you rounding that off? the heck that wrench fit it just right heh I didn't know hmm okay so I'm back I got two sockets got a 17 well hallelujah 17 fits it right at the back or nope my bad it was an 18 it was an 18 Yeah, 17 is too small. So, I know I can already hear you guys saying, oh, that's use an impact socket, use an impact socket. Well, we don't have an impact socket like that. Okay, put that out. Put that right there. And then we'll go down at here get rid of this extension because I don't need anything that long I don't Ouch. just like that guys right here let's see is that two one, two three huh I don't remember how this battery box comes off this pay lower I think there might be three bolts. Okay, so we got the three bolts out of here. Take that. Put that there. And it's quite simple. You got the hot there and the ground there. So, we will take this here battery rejuvenation device and I think we have an outlet that is close by that we can plug her into providing I think these will be big enough we took and put some dielectric grease on the terminals Oops, I'm doing that backwards. We put some dielectric grease on the terminals so that way they make a good connection. Do you guys just hate when you go to um Yeah, when you go to put the battery tender into an outlet and um, you're between an outlet there and between an outlet back there it's quite aggravating it really is but you know what I am just gonna you know not I'm gonna use that cord there that I have the Heston plugged into because well we can start working our way backwards with the core to go to the loader do both of them batteries individually do the cat loader the green truck the black one maybe and then we'll go back to that 844 because the ground terminals on the loader are in a bad spot Okay, I think we're good there. It's a blessing having a long 
enough cord to reach from end to end of the building. That's a good thing about it. Okay, get the cord. We're gonna plug it in. See if see what happens with it. And we got her plugged in correctly. Good deal. So we'll just let that sit for a couple days and um, do its thing. We'll take all of our tools back inside so that they are not let out here in the cold. And we'll just leave them right there so we know that they go to that battery cover down there boy it sure does feel nice when your projects are coming to an end meaning they are getting completed good deal well we got more problems it's the fuel pump's gonna need rebuilt. 2800 dollars through John Deere.